All right, guys, welcome to the Shaw Strength Podcast, and I'm very excited to have my good buddy, Terry Hollins, on today. How you doing? Yeah, good, good. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. First podcast I've actually ever done, so yeah, it's crazy. Interesting. We, we literally just found that out. I, I, found, I figured you had done a few of these, nah. at least, and this is the first one. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been asked to do a couple, but yeah, just never got around to doing it, so yeah, it's interesting. Well, I'm sure you're going to get more offers after this. Oh. We'll it's going to be big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Brian Shaw big. That's it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I mean, there is literally a, uh, a crazy amount of stuff that we could talk about potentially. But, um, you know, we, I kind of threw out some uh, a post on um, social media asking what, what people were interested in, you know, that type of thing, uh, what, what they wanted to hear about uh, from us. And I think that you know, kind of getting into this, I think you and I have an interesting perspective on the sport of strongman, just due to the fact that we've been doing it so long. Yeah. I mean, you've, you started, uh, your first World Strongest Man was 2005. You've now done 13 of them. Yeah. Only missing one because you decided to, to kind of take a step back and do the TV commentating. Yeah. So other than that, I mean, you've done every single year and I've, I've done every one since 2008. Yeah. Um, you made the final nine times. Britain's Strongest Man, uh, podium at World Str- or podium at World Strongest Man twice, podium at Europe's Strongest Man. Yeah. So I mean, you've you've been through the sport. I mean, I don't really think I need to say a lot of those things, but you know, just in case anybody's tuning in uh, that doesn't know um, your accomplishments, what you've been able to do in the sport, and and I mean, it's it's changed so much. I mean, fr- from when I got into it, you know, yeah. two thousand eight. I mean, the the um, you know, world's strongest man, ju- just the caliber of athletes, the level that everything is at. I mean, it's, uh, it's been pretty nuts. So what was it like? I mean, when you got in 2005, I know, um, you didn't have a lot of formal strongman training. No. Um, so you went in, how was that? Yeah. I mean, so my first year was actually my first year of competing. So it's the first year I'd done any real strongman training. I mean, I'd done a little bit of lifting in the past just from, just for, you know, just for fun and for my own enjoyment but yeah I mean it was it was 2005 when I started actually taking lifting seriously and you know it was, I mean the, the the change in the sport has been huge since then I remember my first year going into it and I think the Viking press was like 115 kilos in the hands and I, we, we did the, the deadlift where they dropped the barrels in and the the top end lift was like 345 kilos the final lift that's and, crazy uh, yeah and, and, and I think only two of the guys out of all the groups finished it as well so it was like the, the standard and the progression has been huge. Especially, I mean, I think the top guys were, even back then, you know, you had Marius and, you know, a couple of other guys that were, were really good. But the, the strength in depth now, I mean, the, the good guys are better than they were, but also the strength in depth is, is so much greater than it was. Now it's all 30 guys at World's Strongest Man are good, whereas, you know, you almost knew what was going to happen before you even went to the contest back then. Yeah, you could you could almost pick with, especially with the qualifying groups. Yeah. I think up, I would say, I mean, definitely at that point in time, but um, even up until probably five, six years ago. Yeah. I mean, you could, when the groups came out, you could pretty much pick, unless there was some kind of huge upset, yeah. the top two guys that would go to the finals. And now you look at the groups at World's Strongest Man, and typically, I mean, we know a little bit better than maybe the, yeah. the general you know public would, but you know, it's still something where there are groups where you're like, man, there's four or five guys in that group that could go through, yeah, you know, based on performance or what happens or whatever. So, you know, the level, I mean, there's guys now every single year that, that miss out on the final that if they were in a different group, they potentially could have easily gone through the final. I mean, it's the sport just in general, there's so many guys, um, that, that, uh, we all push each other. Yeah. I mean, it's always kind of been that way, but I think in the last probably handful of years, uh, that level has just gone up crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, I mean, it's a sign of the sport getting bigger as well. I think the, the popularity is growing and it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. I mean, I know it certainly is back home. Yeah. Um, it's growing very, very quickly. So I think the, obviously the, the bigger the prize in terms of like the, the popularity and everything of the sport, you know, if you're doing well, obviously it can spin off into a lot of other things and you can end up, 
you know, making a good career from it now, which when I started, you couldn't do that. It was just everyone had jobs as well as, as doing strongman, whereas now you can be a professional strongman if you're good enough. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, that's, that's been a very big positive change. A lot of the guys are a lot more professional than they used to be. I mean, I can remember, I mean, some of the stories back from the old days and you'd have, you'd have caught the back end of it when the guys were out partying the night before competitions and stuff like that. Yeah. Now everyone's so professional in the way they conduct themselves even away from competitions when they're training and the, the amount of work that goes into the rehab and, the, you know, everything, it's just become, you know, so much, so much more professional than it used to be. I mean, you know, like a compliment to you, I think you were one of the people that really sort of took that to the next level in terms of putting a lot more effort into and thought into what you're doing in the build-up to competitions, not just the performance on the day. Yeah, it's... I mean, that, that stuff, and, and one of the questions we actually got uh, from somebody is, you know, the fact that we post, you know, a lot of training, but it's always, you know, it's always the main lifts or the bigger lifts or the bigger event training and, yep. and like that type of stuff. And um, that, that particular person was kind of asking, you know, how much other stuff goes on, yeah. you know, and, and there, I, I, there's a ton. I mean, there's a ton of different stuff uh, that happens from, you know, whether, whether it's uh, kind of self treatment, yeah. um, you know, you're kind of working on something during the day. I think, you know, pretty much we do that every single day of the week. Yeah. I mean, I said, I, mean, I said, well, I talked a little bit about it last night when we were training, I spend more time doing rehab stuff than I do actually training these yeah. days. And it, and it is crucial. I mean, especially obviously when I'm a bit older as well, but it is yeah. crucial even for the young guys to, to look after your body as best you can. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. Um, I was talking uh, to J.F. Carone about it. One of the questions, uh, you know, that, that came up, and we'll get into this a little bit more, was, you know, if you could go back in time, what would you tell your kind of younger self uh, to do? And he said um, his main answer, and it makes complete sense, was, hey, I would do a lot more stretching, mm -hmm. a lot more mobility work, a lot more, uh, you know, kind of prehab yeah. uh, stuff before you need to do rehab uh, from an injury. And instead of just going and training and that was it, but... You know, when you're younger, it's a different ball game. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, both of us, you know, have kind of figured out like, okay, as you get a little bit older, things start to change. The training has to evolve a little bit. Uh, you have to put a little bit more time and thought into how yeah. you recover um, and how much, <laughs> you know, kind of how much effort you're going to put into your training, you know, and those type of things. But I mean, for you, w would you, you know, let's just say going back in time, because you, you came from a rugby background. Yep. How many years did you play rugby? Well, since I was a, like a young boy, so about, well, since I was about eight years old. So. And see, I would, I would say, me, you know, coming from a basketball background, I think that was huge yep. for me. I think it was huge for you. Oh, definitely. You know, from an athletic, you know, standpoint, stepping in. I mean, um, so that, let's go back to that, Terry Hollins. Yeah. What would you tell, you know, just coming from playing rugby, not really doing, you know, a whole lot of serious weight training, probably yep. messed around a little bit, you know, so you're fresh, right? Yep. What would your advice be to yourself at that, at that point in time, if you could go back and say, okay, I have all the knowledge from, you know, the, the you know, almost two decades now of competing, mm. what would the, what would the advice be to that Terry Holmes? I mean, probably, um, I mean, the big thing, and I, I think probably most people would be the same. I mean, a lot of doing a lot more work in terms of looking after your body. I mean, I remember, I don't think for the first three years of competing, I, did, I had a single sports massage, not one. That's crazy. You know, and every yeah. session I'd go in the gym and lift as heavy as I possibly could. And it was, there, was no, there was no fault to what I was doing. So probably, you know, the, the, the big thing I would say is just, just generally being a bit more um, selective about the way I do things, not pushing hard all the time. And, and just generally looking after my body better. I mean, as you know, sort of from past experience with me, you know, I was a little bit off the rails when I was first started with a strong man as well. And, you know, always liked to be out partying and not really looking after my body that well. And, yeah. you know, my diet was terrible. And, you know, so I think probably those for me would be the biggest, the biggest things I would change. Just generally look, just looking after myself better than I did because... Yeah. And, and that includes obviously training smart because you know I trained like a moron when I first started I just sure. every session was just going lift as heavy as I possibly could and go on and 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 then sort of just deal with the pain and the the niggles and everything else but where I was a bit younger perhaps I could get away with it but still I should have done the right things at the right times and probably 
when I feel I was at my peak sort of 2010 to sort of 2013, 14, that's when I felt at my strongest. I also had a lot of injuries in that time as well. So probably if I'd have looked after myself a little bit better, then perhaps those wouldn't have happened. And then I really could have progressed onto another level from where I got to. And, you know, it's, it's you know, I don't regret anything because, sure. you know, you can't regret anything in life. It's took you to where you are. And if you're in a good place, then... Yeah. That's perfect, but those are things I de- would definitely have uh, adjusted a little bit. Just to, just to build that base a little bit more. I mean, when when you were when you were getting started out, did um, did you have anybody that was kind of you know helping you out, kind of showing you, hey, this is this is how you do strongman, this is how you do this event, or was it kind of trial and error on your own? I mean, it was a lot of trial and error because I mean, even back then, I mean, you'd you'd probably know there, there just wasn't the information out there to. You know, I was, I was doing like almost like bodybuilding training with a little bit of powerlifting type stuff mixed in and, you know, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Yeah. And the, the, I was lucky in the respect that I had a good training partner and he was trying to do strongman as well. I mean, he ended up being under 105 British champion numerous times and cause he was a fair bit smaller than me, but both of us were like British champions in our, yeah. in our classes for a good few years, sort of. And he... Um, yeah, I mean, we just muddled through together and learned together. Yeah. And, um, you know, some stuff we got wrong and it didn't quite work out and some things we got right. And obviously, you know, that that experience in some ways was invaluable because it's, you know, you learn from all that stuff. But, you know, it'd be nice to not have to learn the hard way sometimes. Sure. Yeah. It's, I mean, the, the amount of information for sure, you know, that's out there, uh, I think it help a lot of the younger athletes to not have to kind of jump over those hurdles yeah, um, definitely. and go through all that. But at the same time, you know, I know for me, when I started out, there was really nobody um, around at least this area that was doing it. There was, you know, um, a couple guys that, that I kind of hooked up with. I had to drive about an hour or so, you yeah. know, to go down on a, a weekend and, and do a couple events. But then again, it wasn't a crazy amount of equipment or anything set up. So I started building my own yeah. uh, to do it, and then I would fly out, um, you know, to go train with the best guys that I could here yep. in the states, at least, and try to learn from them, and then apply essentially that knowledge yeah. uh, and see if it would work for me. Study a lot of videos, you know, that type of stuff. So it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy, um, and I think that'll be interesting for you know, especially if there's anybody younger that's listening to this that's trying to get in, you yep. know, to the sport. It's you know, for both of us, I feel like we pretty much just jumped in yeah, head first. Oh, definitely. And then you, it's kind of like you're in the water. Now you need to figure out how to swim. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, versus. Yeah, I remember my, when I did my first World's Strongest Man, the only strongman equipment I had was a pair of farmer's walks, a log, some beer kegs, I think about three of them, Okay. and, and a tire, and that was it. <laughs> so I was, I was training for World's Strongest Man with that amount of equipment, and um you know, you think now everyone's got everything. It's yeah, like pretty to- much. totally different. Yeah. You can walk into sort of some normal gyms and they've, and got, they've got more strongman strong man equipment than that. That's so, crazy. Um, yeah, but it was, I mean, it was different back then. And, and, you know, obviously I've tried to evolve and learn and change with the times. Yes. The same as the sports evolved, I've had to sort of try and evolve with it. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously up until a few years ago till I had the retirement, you know, I managed to sort of successfully do that. It's just as the sport progressed, I progressed with it, you know, the same as you did sort of. Yeah. And obviously, well, I mean, from your point of view, you almost were one of the pioneers of the changes for, within the sport. You know, when I first started, generally guys were either athletic or they were strong. Yeah. They, they weren't really ever both, you know, sure. and, and guys like yourself managed to sort of combine that and be both and I think that's 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 been the big change of the sport yeah everyone's good at everything now whereas before everyone had little chinks in their armor and things that they weren't particularly good at yeah there that um it's totally true I mean it, it's totally true I mean it's just it's just evolved um you know from that point because like you said you'd have and I remember that like where you'd have certain guys that were very very good at the static events yeah and then they couldn't do the moving events. Mm-hmm. So they would lose points there. And then, you know, somebody that was really athletic was kind of better at the moving stuff. And they would really lose points in, yep. in some of the static stuff. And, you know, it's kind of bridging that gap, you know, oh, now definitely. Um, to be to be good at everything. And, and um, you know, I think that uh, um, a lot of guys now, you know, have changed their mentality a little bit about the events. And they um, go after them really hard. They 
you know, attack their weaknesses. They, yep. you know, and, and, um, you know, that's something I know for myself. I definitely, definitely really tried to do. Cause you know, I, I mean, it, it, it made sense to not lose points, yeah. you know, on, on every, well, everything. I think you, me and you were both the same, like always had that, that pressing weakness when we were like both, yeah. both quite fresh and you, you did manage to turn that around. I, I didn't quite so much, but yeah. you at know, certain you, points, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you did manage to turn that around and you went from being one of the, you know, it being a weak event for, for you to being a pretty strong one, yeah. even in the world's strongest man final. So yeah. I think that that's the, you know, that, that's that been the big change in the sport. I think every, everyone's just good at everything. And if they don't start off good at something, they get there eventually somehow. Sure. And they find a way to make it work. Yeah. So speaking speaking of evolution, probably in your, I'm sure this isn't going to shock you. A lot of people that uh, that responded on social media were talking about kind of your transformation yeah. and, um, you know, kind of how you've evolved. And there was some, there was definitely some good questions. Um so, you know, going through that, the, the first one here, I'll just kind of read a couple, but um, was uh, asked Harry, uh, does he regret all the years he spent being, being overweight or was it worth it for the strength to compete? Um, and in terms of long, long-term weight loss, uh, what are his strategies for keeping it off? So do you, I mean, and I kind of know your answer, but yeah. go ahead and. I mean, the, the, the trouble is, I mean, in terms of health wise, you know, I, you know, we spoke a little bit about it when I got here. I'm better now than I was when I first started competing. Yeah. My blood work's coming back better and, you know, my heart's in a better place, blood pressure's better. So if for, for everyday life, I'm certainly in a better place than I was. Yeah. But, you know, being as, as I was and, and, you know, whether it was good for real life or not, it got me two third place at World's Strongest Man. So, 100%. you know, it was at that time in my life, all that really mattered to me was performing well. Yeah, and in terms of, I didn't care how I looked. I wasn't worried about, you know, any of that side of things. I wasn't worried about whether I looked good, bad, or anything else in anyone else's eyes. All that mattered was how I performed in competition, and well, at World Strongest Man mainly, because yep. you know, it's um, that's that that was always the crucial competition. Absolutely, and um, yeah, it was just at that point it sort of served the purpose. I was strong, you know, yep. and, and stronger than I am now. So. I probably wouldn't change things necessarily because you know you can't you can't dwell on it. You yeah. used to say, like I said, I'm not as strong now as I was when I was bigger. Yeah. So I used to say if I'd have lost the weight back then, I'd have got the podiums at World's Strongest Man. You know, possibly not. So yeah, you know, I think, like I said, at the point I'm at in my life and the point I'm at in my career, it's it's for the best for me right now. But at that point, probably I wouldn't have changed anything. And I'm lucky in the respect that you know, my health's in a good place where I am right now. So it's not really left any lasting damage. So, you know, it's, it's for me now, the, the, the goal moving forward is to try and prolong my career as long as possible. Almost a little bit acceptant that I'm, I'm not going to go on and win World's Strongest Man now. I'm too old and that time has probably passed. Well, more than very lightly passed. And, um, you know, so now it's about trying to be competitive but also be healthy so I can, you know, carry on doing the sport I love for as long as I possibly can. I think if I'd have carried on being as unhealthy and everything else as I was, because it got progressively worse over the years. Yeah. I think at the point where it sort of got really too much, I was like 205 kilos I was up to. Yeah. And, um, you know, my health was not in a good place. And probably if I'd have carried on on that path, my career would probably be done by now. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. So, when, I mean, when you started out with that, I mean, was it, what, what was the, uh, um, like, turning point? Was there, was there coin, kind of just like a, you know, a moment where you just kind of, whatever, looked in the mirror, you know, kind of sat down and said, all right, I'm, I'm going to set out on a mission here to change I mean, probably a big part of it was um, obviously like when Zach was born and when he started to get a bit older and started to walk around and things like that. So Zach's my son for anyone that doesn't know that. Yeah. Um, when he started moving around and walking around and, you know, it was a struggle. Like, yeah. I, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm, I've got a child that's got so much energy and I literally can't keep up with him. Yeah. And um, I started to sort of look at myself and just think, you know, this is, this is not how I want my life to be right now. I've got a young son. You know, I want to be around for as long as possible and, and be able to go and play soccer in the park with him in a few years' time when he's a bit older and things like that. 
and at the point I was at, I wouldn't have been able to. So, yeah. you know, that was sort of probably the turning point, obviously, as, as he started to get older. And now it's sort of, you know, I can take him over the field and we can run around together and things like that. He's, he's free next week. And, yeah, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that as I was. So yeah. it's, it was all about quality of life, really. And um, I put the performance and the strong man, you know, back in the sort of pecking order of what was important to, to me a little bit. And don't get me wrong, it's still important. I still love it. I still enjoy the training, competing, everything else. But, you know, my, my quality of life is now more important than that was. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of a weird one, actually, because when I first initially lost, I think I went down to about 170 kilos quite quickly. So what's that? And this is from, from around 200, 205 kilos. Yeah. So I went down to that pretty quickly. So that's, uh, um, in, a, in American <laughs> talk, it's like, so four, like four, four, uh, four, 450. 440, 450 down to, what did you say? Three, one, 375. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. And, and that was quite quick. And then at that point, I sort of remember sitting there thinking, God, I didn't realize how bad I actually felt because yeah. I feel so good now. Yeah, and it was, it was it actually didn't because it was such a gradual thing of feeling worse and more lethargic. I didn't actually realise how bad it was. Yeah, and and you know to the point where I think when all the time I was like 175 kilos, 180, that sort of thing. So just you know a bit under 400 pounds, I could get away with it and function in normal life. And my performances were good at World Strongest Man. Yeah, it was when I went beyond that. Although some of my gym lifts were getting stronger. Sure everything else was suffering so I lost my athleticism I lost the you know because I used to have the ability to win loading races and things like that and then all of a sudden I couldn't win loading races and I, and I wasn't winning the deadlifts I was just placing fairly high yeah so it was kind of like I've not really gained a lot in terms of points on the deadlift and things like that by and putting I, by putting on more weight by putting on more yeah. weight I might have gained like one or two points but I'm losing four or five by not being able to do the moving events as well yeah so, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it just went too far and it was something that I needed to do. And then when I started to come down, it was just like, it just kept going really. Because it then became easy for me to, to drop more fat because I became more active, you know. Yeah. It was a lot easier for me to move around. So then I was moving around more. And, yeah. And well, as, as those changes were happening was, um, you know, from from a perspective of kind of looking at yourself, how your clothes are fitting, how you're feeling about yourself. I mean, did that, you know, did that kind of motivate you more? Yeah, I mean, as it was happening, yeah, I'd probably say. I mean, we talked a little bit about it. Yeah, I probably took it a little bit too far. I mean, it's, I'm, I've put a little bit of fat back on again now. Yeah, but I think I think I did take it almost a little bit too far. I was I was down at about eleven percent body fat, which. You know, I know people claim to be that sort of low when they're not. Yeah, know, but, but, <laughs> uh, eleven percent uh, yeah, is, is a legit low. eleven percent. Yeah. So, and um, and you said that was on a DEXA scan. Yeah, that was on so a DEXA scan. So legit. Yeah. I mean, that's a legit eleven percent. Yeah. So it was, um, you know, it was just a case of sort of I, I pushed that too far and perhaps a little bit in terms of for performance, but. Um, you know, so perhaps, yeah, I did get a little bit almost carried away with it and almost addicted to the feeling of, like, you know, looking at myself and thinking, no, I look, I look so much better than I used to. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't go as far as say I look good, but I look better than I did. And, so, um, so balancing that, like saying, okay, I look better, I feel better, quality of life is better, blood work's better, everything's better. Where was the, where was the shift in, in, because I, I know there had to be some shift in the gym right where it went from okay i feel really big and strong to walking into the gym and saying man i i just kind of have hit a point where I, where i'm going for a heavier lift and it doesn't feel the same my leverages aren't the same yeah and um, and then how did that affect you mentally i mean i was um i was actually in a good place because i i you know i expected to to take a drop in strength yeah you, know, you, was totally, you would have to you yeah, know yeah. I, I was totally prepared for it so it wasn't it wasn't like it was a shock I was like oh my god I'm so weak it was and it was it was like a gradual thing but I was totally sort of prepared for it and um, you know I mean probably initially I mean I, I lost quite a bit of strength straight yeah. away I mean my deadlift went from you know I mean I know I got up to 450 at my strongest but normally I'd pull around 430 yeah, that's sort for of thing. sure yep. and then all of a sudden I'm like trying to deadlift heavy after I'd lost the bulk of the weight that I'd lost and and all of a sudden it was like 360 was hard 
Yeah. You know, I was like, oh God, what has happened? Yeah, but for sure. I, you know, but I was, you know, I was, like I said, I was in a good place. And because I had so many positives come from it, I was like, no, this, this can come back. I can get this back. It's just going to take a bit of time. But it was, um, you know, my, my fault at that point was I'm a lot fitter and healthier than I was. My recovery's better. I can yeah. train harder than I used to be able to. So hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to, you know, train harder so effectively get stronger. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I'm still not back there right now, but, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah. It's, it's still, still moving in the right direction. And almost this year, it sort of almost wrote it off a little bit in terms of not expecting anything. Yeah. Um, that next year, I would start to to be expecting some better performances, yeah. getting back to the finals well, of it's such as a, well. It's such a drastic change, you yeah. know? And the, I don't think a lot of people understand when you're, when you're built a certain way and you're so used to doing something like a deadlift, yeah. uh, and, and you're, you're just due to the fact that your body composition has changed, you don't have that, that same mass. Not- you know, when you, when you get down, it's not the same kind of feeling, yep. you know? Um, th- there's... That, that takes time, you know, yeah. to, to, to build back up. And I think that, you know, like you said, it's, it's just kind of a complete overhaul. Yeah. A recomposition of your body. And now you, you have to approach it a little bit differently. Yeah, I mean... And I, that's all it is. I notice it a lot with deadlifting. My, my stance is completely different to what it used to be. It, just you know, because of... Yeah, my leverages are so different. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, it felt really alien at first when I was I trying to deadlift I can't like imagine. I used to. Yeah. And I'm like... This just feels so so strange, and I feel like I need to learn to deadlift again. Yeah, and it, you know it's still it's just sort of starting to click now. Yeah, I mean obviously as we spoke a little bit about, I've had that hip issue which has slowed me down a bit this year, but finally I feel like I'm in a I'm in the right sort of place, and it's starting to move in a good direction again. So, but yeah, I mean I I don't think exactly like you said I don't think people really would understand how much of a big change is. I mean I'm a hundred pounds lighter than I used to be. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, how much weight? How much weight do you think? I mean, do you have do you have something in mind, like as far as? Because I think you you feel like you need to put a little bit back on. Yeah. Like, is there a certain like goal weight? What what's like? Because I know what I would say about like what yeah. what you were saying, kind of in that range. Um, you know, probably probably around four hundred pounds is I I think where you were your best, like yeah. one hundred eighty kilos. Yeah. But now that you're leaner, is there a certain weight that you in your mind are thinking, all right, if I hit this point, keeping the composition similar, yeah. I'll be I feel like I'll be good at that weight. Yeah, I mean I, feel, a I, I think if I could get sort of back up to like 355, 360, if I could get back to that, keep my body fat percentages similar to where they're at now. I mean yeah. I think I could do with maybe being a little bit more. Yeah. I mean we spoke a bit about that as well for sort of optimum performance. I could probably do with being a tiny bit higher. Yeah. But I think, yeah, somewhere in that range, 355, 360, at the same sort of body fat percentage now, I feel like I'd be quite competitive in terms okay. of, because of th- then I'd get the balance of the fitness and the speed and everything else because, you know, I'm, I'm a hell of a lot fitter than I used to be. There's oh my no gosh, about it's, that. yeah. But it's, um, but then I, I need to be strong again. So it's just trying to get that balance between the two. I've almost gone from one extreme to the other. Yeah. I was strong and strong and really unfit and now I'm, pretty fit for a strong man and, and not really fit. strong. No, yeah. really fit for a strong. I mean, it's, it's something like, it's interesting to hear you talk about it for me because I got to see all of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to see you from 2007 yep. until, until now, you know, and it's, it's like if my feeling about it is, is your mentality is so much better. Yeah. Right. And like, I'm asking you about this and you're, you're, you're saying, all right, like, I know I was going to have to take this in stride. The strength mm-hmm. was going to come down. It's going to come back up. Here's my plan to make this happen, but I'm better. I'm healthier. You know, I'm a better dad. I'm, I'm you know, yeah. and, and just overall, I think, you know, and, and, you know, we don't have to get into, you know, general life, but just in, you're just happier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, just, definitely. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously it's probably not a subject that we should sort of go over to. No, much, no. But yeah, yeah. My, my life's in a lot more, more, more of a happy place now than it was. And, um, you know, that, that transfers onto everything. It's, un, I yeah. can't, I can, I mean, I can see it. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, just, it's just talking to you and being around you and, and, um, you know, I know that that, like you said, it transfers to everything. Mm-hmm. And I think that, 
you know, I think the people out there can take a lot away from that because, you know, as you said, and I think there's, there's a lot of people out there that kind of get into those situations where they're eating unhealthy, they're, they're overweight, they're, they're unhappy, but until they kind of start to make a change, they don't realize how unhappy yeah. or how bad they actually felt yeah. at the, at their worst point. And then all of a sudden they're, they're have more energy and they feel better and, you know, they're, they're just overall better. Everything kind of trickles down and, and, um, you know, it's neat, it's neat to see you go through it. Yeah. I'm you know what I'm saying? And I think that they're, you can look, we'll look at any of your posts, mm. right? Like how many people follow that and say, holy cow, this is crazy. Yeah. Like what you've been able to do and your transformation. And you know, it's, it's, I'm sure you're inspiring people that you don't even know. Yeah. I mean, by well, going through this, you know, I mean, that's been a really positive thing for me. I mean, and cause you know, I was always, you know, and the same as yourself, you know, we want people to take some inspiration from us because that's a, that's a huge positive we're in a position where we can actually help people achieve what they want to and it's almost like since i've made the changes it's given it's given me a whole new sort of dynamic of people that are then going oh okay like i, I could do it too sure and and i think that for me has been a you know reading a lot of people comment and you know send me messages and say like you know, you've inspired me to make the changes myself. And that is, is such a massive thing, you know. That's it's, cool. it's, it makes you feel good. I mean, and Absolutely. things like that are, are um, yeah, definitely sort of a massive positive that you can take out of out of the changes that I've, I've made. It's, it's, it's a really nice thing to be able to inspire people, whether that's to be stronger, which I used to be able to do, and to try and achieve their goals in that respect, or whether it's to lose weight or, you know, just... Sure. I mean, I think... When you see someone achieve something which is, is you know, a, a good thing, whether it's being the strongest man in the world or the fastest man in the world or, you know, when you see someone put the work in and make those achievements, yeah, you can't not take inspiration from that, even if you're not having the same goal. So Absolutely. Yeah, I think I it's, it's, you know, that has been a massive positive for me and it's had a, had a big impact on how I feel as well. So, sure. you know, other people's reaction to, to me. It's, so it's this, good. this is, I mean, with all that being said, I think this is a perfect question uh, to kind of go into. And, and um, this one says, and I can, I can elaborate on this as well, because uh, I, I feel the same thing. Um, and we can, we can go into it a little bit more. But it says, uh, would be uh, great to hear Tell talk about the psychological element of being a world's strongest man veteran with multiple multiple podium finishes who a lot of people uh rule out nowadays right yeah and i like without before you answer like i feel i feel the same way mm -hmm. right because it, it's such a um with social media and yep. with as fast as things move it's very much in strong man you're only as good as your last contest yep. right and so if you have something that went on or you didn't finish as well as you kind of hoped to or people expected you to, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden they're writing you off. You're yeah. done. You're, you're, you can't come back. You can't do anything. And I think, you know, in, in um, definitely in your head and my head too, like it's, it's completely different and there are reasons a lot of times why things happen yeah, and, and why I think people don't know, don't know the backstory a lot of the time and they, yeah. they just see what they see and I mean partly down to our that's, that's partly down to our issue because they only see what we put out there that's true that and um, true. you know in terms of you know I can sort of track back through my career and you know I've had some good highs where things have gone really well and I've had some low points and I can pretty much track that all of those times when things haven't really gone to plan there's been some very big thing going on in my life. You know, I can talk about it now because obviously it was a long time ago, like 2008 World Strongest Man, just after coming off the back of coming third, was looking to push on and hopefully try and win 2008. You know, I made the final and come last. I was terrible. But yeah. what people don't see going on behind the scenes was I'd split up with my then girlfriend. I was homeless for probably about three months. You know, and they don't, and I, and I barely train for like a year. Absolutely. And, and people don't see that and they don't hear that. Yeah. Because, you know, and I, was, I was in a pretty bad place. Yeah, I remember. I, I mean, I, I was remember. quite yeah. proud that I even managed to get to World's Strongest Man, let alone make yeah. the final. And um, obviously then it was like, oh, you know, you've you done so badly, you come 10th. And it's like, 
I'm tenth in the world, and I've trained like three times in the yeah. last six months. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I've been living on my friend's sofas or on my mum and dad's sofa for nearly a year, and it's like, yeah, and and people sort of don't see what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. Back, back then, as you know, like there wasn't the money in the sport either, so it was like, yeah, you're trying to make it make it work. Yeah, it was difficult, and yeah. um, you know, and and then you know, there's been a couple of other times where things have happened where you know it's not quite gone to plan, and you know, this year, well. You know, last year I had some some pretty big changes in my life as well. Absolutely. Went through a divorce and everything else. And, yeah. you know, it's not not that it was actually a particularly um, stressful breakup. It wasn't like me and my ex have got no real animosity or anything like that. But it's still stressful just dealing with this big life change. And, and um, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit to come back from that. And I don't think people really obviously factor things like that in. It's hard to motivate yourself to train when you've got all these stresses going on around you. And, yeah. and um, you know, it's, it's, it's not, not that I'm complaining about it in terms of, you know, these things happen in life, you have to deal with it. But I always think, and the same goes with injuries as well, you know, it's how you come back from stuff that, yeah. that really is the, the measure of, of who you are and what you are. And every time I've sort of had a low point in my career, I've always bounced back and, and yeah. come back stronger eventually anyway. So do you feel, I mean, do you feel like, uh, like even in those moments, uh, you know, like, like this question was, you know, the psychological, you know, yeah. aspect of it, having a positive outlook, um, you know, and, and now it's, it's way more than, you know, 10 years ago because yeah. everybody's so vocal so yeah. quickly, right. About, well, this guy's hot. I'm going to jump on his bandwagon or, or that type of thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's they don't know all those reasons that you just said, no. right? But, you know, from your, from your aspect, and I, I'm sure I would have an answer for this, but I'm just curious what, what you would say is, you know, let's just say that you see people writing negative stuff, making negative comments, you know, saying, hey, you know, Terry's done, he's, he's washed up, or, yep. or you know, he, his best days are behind him, that type of thing. Like, how, how do you take that? I mean, it's kind of a weird one. Like, majority of the time, I mean, there's, I have moments where I'm like, who is this person? Like, why are you saying this about me? And it yeah. almost, you, you get a little bit offended by it. But most of the time I sit there and think, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. They don't know what's going on with my training. It's like even now, you know, for Dubai, you know, perhaps I'm not, I'm not in, a in with a chance of winning, winning the show, but no one knows what sort of shape I'm in. Yeah, of course. People see what I want them to see. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think I know that I'm moving in the right direction and building to something. So it's almost, I think we're all quite pig-headed and quite, sure. you know, focused on what we're doing. You know, what, what people say about you being finished, it's like, or, or about me, you know, in this, this, it doesn't really matter. Because I, I know I'm not. Yeah. And I know that, you know, it's nice when you can prove these people wrong as well. Yeah. And just sort of. On that, on that yeah. does, it, does it motivate you a little bit? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, does it does it get that fire going? It's like, all right, well, you know, because I'll say it for me, like there's been, you know, I mean, I came off, um, you know, just just in the last couple of years, right? Like yeah. 2017 Arnold, I won that very comfortably. Mm -hmm. I almost didn't have to do the last event yeah. um, there. It was, you know, really, really comfortable win. Then, you know, I had a couple of things happen with World's Strongest Man in 2017. Didn't work out, right? Um, you know, it was, it was uh, I felt like there were, you know, it, it just, that happens with competition, mm -hmm. right? But I was like, all right, I was still in the mix. A couple things, <coughs> just a couple things fall differently, and yeah. I could have won. Well, it was two points. Yeah, it, it, was wasn't, it wasn't a lot. So, and the, you know, in, in, whatever, we don't have to go into yeah. it, but... It's like, then you come back in 2018 and then I kind of did a little bit of what you did. You know, I switched up, I, I felt unhealthy. I felt like, hey, mm -hmm. I, need to, I need to change my body composition a little bit here. So I completely switched up my diet coming into this year. Um, went in, got second place at the Arnold. I think it was three points there. Um, you know, and didn't have, didn't have an amazing contest. Uh, didn't feel, you know, kind of yeah. my normal self. But still, I mean, it's second place at the Arnold yeah. with, you know, and again, three points. Like, that's one event that could go a little bit differently. Yeah. It's not a lot. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then World's Strongest Man, obviously, I had multiple things going on this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, Probably at the top of the list, my, the birth of my son that I had to miss. Yeah. 
to be at the contest, which, you know, um, along with a couple other things that, you know, anybody that follows me, I've put out there, um, you know, uh, and it was tough, man, but th it's kind of like those things have happened. And of course you look at the biggest contest and again, you're only as good as yeah. your last one. And so many people, it's, it's like crazy to me that they're sitting here saying, yeah, Brian's done. He's washed up. He's way past his prime. Yeah. Like not gonna, not gonna happen for him anymore. Like he needs to just hang it up and yeah and i'm just like still come third in the world and yeah yeah, yeah that, just that, that's my highest yeah. place <laughs> but i think i think that's quite interesting like the the different mindset like you know you'd be unhappy with third place where right now i'd be over the moon with third place sure, and sure. It's, it's um actually even from the general public it's been they, they have a similar sort of thing i remember 2008 world strongest man and i'd made the final and everyone tore me to pieces. Oh, he's he's done. He's finished. He's he's this. He's that. He was awful. An embarrassment to the country. I, I got everything. Holy yeah. cow! That's I got nuts. all of it thrown at me. Yeah. And then literally the exact same people are commenting on the other British guys' posts. Oh, you did so well. You did amazing. When they couldn't make the final, and it's like. So even their mindset's different. You know, they're saying, you're, you know, oh, Brian's yeah. past his best. You still come third at World's Strongest Man. And it's yeah. like, with all that, that outside factors in, yeah. included. And, um, but it's again, it's again, the people that are making the comments, yeah. most of the time don't know what's going on. No. And, and the, 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 it's crazy. It's, I think it's, something that people don't sort of factor in, unless they've been a high level sports person themselves, at the top, the margins are tiny. Very, yeah, So if, yeah. if you have like two events where things don't quite go right for you, that can make all the difference. Yeah. You know, and, and it, you know, we've had events. I remember Manchester last year, the Giants Live World Championships final, whatever they called it. I was one and a half seconds behind first place on both the moving events. And I come last on both of them. That's insane. You know, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's such small margins. If I'd have been a second and a half quicker, I'd have won the event. Yeah. And, and then probably, I mean, it's, the outcome then completely changes. Yeah. I mean, World's Strongest Man this year, because, you know, the truck pull was so light. I think there was four of us. Yeah, yeah, it was close, wasn't it? Four of us within, four or five, I think it was four, within one second. Yeah. Within one second, one 1,000, and that was four places, right? So yeah. you come, you come uh, once, you know, one second faster and you win versus getting fourth or fifth in the yeah. event. I mean, it's, it's completely could change the whole outcome of the contest. It's... And but that, it's, that it's, could just be a slip of the foot as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a you just have a bad start or whatever, and you're that's that's one second mm -hmm. for sure. But you know, it's it's crazy. Like like turning that. I know for myself, um, you know, I try to take all of that. I don't. I don't. You know, I don't particularly go out of my way to try to see comments or to read things yeah. or or whatever. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like I kind of enclose myself in the gym here yeah and i put my work in and you know i've always kind of had the mindset you know because i'm a little bit more old school i would rather i'd rather kind of work in silence yeah instead of putting out so much stuff on social media or the internet or whatever um about where i am and just show up to the contest in really good shape because yeah. i put the hard work in and so i i but if i do see those comments i i'd say all right you know, you're saying that and, and you're obviously thinking it yep. enough to write it somewhere. Fair enough, right? But it's more of a, I'm going to take that from you and use it yeah. and say, all right, well, you're going to be, you're going to, I'm going to make you write something different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to make you. But those sort of people won't write anything different. Yeah. But in my mind, I can yeah, make yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I mean, you know, it's, or at least, at least make them say, you know what? I shouldn't have wrote that about Brian. Yeah. You know, like I'm going to. I'm going to at least take a step back and say, all right, fair enough. I thought you were done. I thought you were washed up. This was my opinion. Yeah. But it's like, it's fuel, right? And I know that a lot of guys like, like uh, I don't know, the best example I can think of is like Eddie, right? Like he always, he always seemed to fuel so much off of people saying, hey, you can't do this. You yep. won't do this, whatever. And I think that that can be a very powerful motivating factor oh definitely. Right? definitely and 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 if you can use it and channel it in the right way i think that can be huge um in your training but i think that you know from a motivation standpoint i think you and i are uh very much the same that it doesn't i don't necessarily like to feed off of that negative not like so much it's more like hey let's be positive let's go get this done you know kind of keep that same mindset but you know it's um it's you have you have your hardcore uh people that are 
you know, have been fans or following for, for years and years and years. And they've mm-hmm. got your back and they kind of see like, hey, Terry had a little bit of an up, a little bit of a down. But yep. you know what? I'm behind him because... Because I've been well, been think, in his corner for a while. I think that's, that's probably awesome. a, a factor of the sport getting so much more popular. Because a lot of the fans that are now into strongman are are new fans. You know, they've they've not grown up watching it. They're you know they're new people to the sport, and so they don't really understand how it all works quite so much. Or you know they don't understand about the history of all the guys. So you know a lot of the the, the fans you know they're watching me and going. Well, well, he's you know he's he's not very good. You know, he, yeah. it doesn't matter what he used to be. He's terrible now. And, yeah. and, and the thing is, they don't think about because they they don't they never saw us when we, well me you know you're still up there, but they never yeah. saw me when I was at my best, and they never saw what I was capable of. And I mean, you're probably exactly the same. I think because we always used to complain about World's Strongest Man being too light. Do you remember those yes, days? Absolutely. And yeah. I think in in those in that era, if if people could have seen some of the things that we were doing in training, yeah, because social media wasn't even so big back then. No, it I wasn't. Think if people yeah. saw some of the things that we were doing, they'd be like pretty blown away by it. Yeah. Because it was just, you know, I remember like even now I, I look back at some of the things I used to be able to do and think, God, how the hell did I ever do that? Yeah. You know, I remember picking up my 205 kilo atlas stone and just one motion it onto the platform three times. Sure. Whereas now it's like, if I could get three reps with 205, <laughs> I'd be happy, like struggling through. It's just, sure. you know, the, the, I think because we were never tested back then, you know, it was like, the, I think that's been a big change as well with like guys deadlift for max, you know, back when we were competing in the early days, there was never a deadlift for max. So it, no. didn't, it didn't actually matter what you could pull. Yeah. Like Maris was never the biggest deadlifter. No, definitely not. But he used yeah. to win the deadlift for reps all the time because yeah. he was well conditioned to that type of event. Well, de- deadlift for max, I, I very vividly remember, um, you know, I was kind of coming into the sport. Uh, there was a big deadlift, uh, Madison Square Garden yep. Super Series, yep. right? And that, that was the hey, we're going to do a max deadlift. That was no straps in that event. Oh, it should be, yeah. Yeah, no straps. And um, uh, I remember everybody was talking about the 900. Yeah. Right, 900-pound deadlift, like a 410-kilo deadlift. Who could do that? And then it was kind of like this big race. And, yep. you know, Kevin Nee and Mark Felix and, you know, those guys. Yeah. Um, who, obviously, Mark is still around. Yeah. You know, still still crazy. Um he does well too, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, one of those things where 900 was the mark was huge, yeah. and, and, you know, if you were pulling in the mid eights, you were doing a good job. Yeah. And now it's, I mean, at least, at least a hundred pounds higher than that. You oh, know, you, now you have to be pulling 900 to even stand a chance of getting any decent points. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, I would say even mid nines yeah. now. Yeah. And then, then, you know, I mean, you're looking at, um, you know, next year, like something like the Arnold Classic, I think with the list of guys, and I'd have to kind of go down to it specifically, but they're out of the 10 guys going, there probably is a good chance that five guys will pull over a thousand pounds yeah. at the Arnold. Like, and, and, you know, that would probably be the same, close to the same scenario, a world's strongest man. Yeah. You know, if, if you have, uh, uh, were to have a max deadlift there, it would go, you know, you'd have half the guys, whereas, you know, I mean, look back at, uh, Gosh, what's a good example? The, well, they did a max deadlift 2011 for the first time, right? Yeah, that was, that was the world's uh, strongest The first man. time I'd done a max at world's strongest man, yeah. yeah and there was, you and I tied yeah. at that one, and Zadrunas won it. Um, and I think there was, everybody was talking about how crazy it was, because there was four or five guys over 900. Yeah, I think it was the first, I think it was six, six, six guys okay. pulled over over 900 or it might have been six guys were over 400 kilos and it was that like, was i it think was like it the was, first time ever like yeah that something like that, over half the field had pulled over 400 kilos well and that was i mean that was tough conditions too. yeah it was terrible rainy and yeah. wet and <laughs> i remember yeah <laughs> that was that was crazy leaving my shoes behind the platform when i took them off to deadlift and then putting them back on and my feet were just soaked and then yeah we, yeah and then i had to do stones in them it was the last event with soaking wet feet but oh it was, i remember good that times too. i Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, well, of course, I was, both of us did well in that contest. Yeah, I think I, 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 um, I, I pulled the, the four, was it 435? That was what I they, think we finished on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I pulled it first, and that, at the time, that was the strongman world record. Yes. Then yeah. you pulled it straight after, and then Zadrunas. Yeah. So for a split second, I had the, I had the record. Yeah, and, um, yeah. You think now, 435, that's almost... 
for the finalists at World's Strongest Man, that's mid-table. Yeah, you know, isn't that crazy? It's, yeah. it's, but that just goes back to the, where we started with this was the evolution, yeah. you know, of the sport and, and so many guys kind of kind of coming into it and specialising and yeah. Well, I remember my first world strongest man. I could deadlift three hundred and fifty kilos, so seven hundred and seventy pounds. That yeah, was, that was how much I could do at my first yeah. world. And and yeah, how that you know it progressed so quickly. Yeah, and, and just and keeps it, progressing as well. That's the that's the scary bit. It's not even slowed down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, I was just kind of scrolling through here to see if there's any, um, any kind of good other questions. There's a lot of great questions, but it's kind of, um, a lot of stuff about the, the weight and, um, uh, that's a good one. What, um, what's your best memories about strongman together? You two have been competing against one another for over, over a decade now, it seems. So you must have some good ones. I think, I mean, for me, it's, I think that's a pretty easy one. You winning your first world and me getting back on the podium, that was yeah. a good moment. Because I think for both of us, it was, you know, obviously you won, so it's a huge deal. But for me, it was getting back on the podium as well and obviously sharing it with you. Yeah. And Zadrunas as well. So I, in my opinion, I was basically, you know, some people would disagree, but it's my opinion. I was sharing the podium with the two best ever. So, yeah. you know, it's for me, that was a that was a, Yeah, that was a good, I mean... That was a good contest, man. That was um, I mean, heavier, heavier than it had been. Yeah, and you, know, you think and the lineup was stacked as well. It, it really was. Like, was. And the final was, you know, some of the some of the greats. You know, it was. Yeah. it was a, such a good lineup. Yeah, I think I think um, you know, speaking to that too, like 2000, 2013. Yeah, that was fun. I remember you and I on day one. Yeah. Like you were in good shape. Yeah, yeah, you were leading. I was second. Yeah, but it was, all, it was only a point or half a point. Yeah, a point in it. Yeah, because I remember they were doing an interview with us. Yeah, and um, and that was then going into max deadlift, which you were pulling really big. Yeah, so it was kind of like you were, and we were. I think we had a pretty good lead. Yeah, I think. Like on everybody, I, mean, I said this. Like I, I actually genuinely think that 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 would have been a podium for me yeah like, you know, i think so too. in, in yeah. my mind i would have been top three for sure yeah. um obviously i ended up wrecking my back on the deadlift and that was that and because you would you would have been for sure for sure top three on deadlift. yeah and it, yeah because yeah. i mean like, that was when i was like yeah. super strong i was pulling like four forties yeah. and stuff yeah that that was that was a fun i remember that because you and i were so back and forth and you had me yeah you had me after the uh i think you were maybe ahead after the frame and the yoke and then yeah. I, I don't remember if no, I got you on truck. truck Paul, you beat me on. I can't remember, but yeah. I, I, I know I was third, yeah. third on all three events. Yeah. I mean. there's been there's been a lot of fun times. I mean, too, those are obviously competition memories. But you know, outside of the contest, I yeah. mean, it's, it's been it's been uh, you know a few a few different fun ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, you know, you've been over to mine quite a few times. Actually, my first time I've made it over here. Yeah, yeah. You know, we talked about this. Yeah, for exactly. A long, a long time. time. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's. I mean, you know, obviously we've, uh, you know, I've always supported you in a big way, and you've always been a supportive back. So yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I think. What was it? Two thousand seven. We first met. Yeah. Uh, Mohegan Sun. Yeah. When I big timed you. You completely did. Yeah. yeah. I was. I'll tell this story. Yeah. So I was. I was excited, you know, because Terry had been in the sport for a couple, um, years. couple of years, yeah. right? And um, taken third then at, at World's Strongest Man. So t you know, around that time, mm. um, you know, so he thought he was all that, and um, I, was. I was. I was. In, <laughs> I was. You hear that? Never lacking confidence. <laughs> um, so, so I was the new guy, new guy on the block, and I was uh, at Mohican Sun, which was a great contest yeah. uh, that we used to do, uh, Super Series. And I was, I was pumped to say hi to Terry, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, walked up, and you were, you were sitting on a couch and on your phone, I think. And I, I said hi, you know, and you, you, <laughs> you put your head up, and, and you're like, I think you said your specific words were, all right then. I said, hi, Terry, how you doing? I'm Brian. All right, then. And then put your face like straight back down in your phone. <laughs> didn't even, didn't even, like, there was no more talking. And I was like, all right, bro. I was, I was, probably, cool. I was probably arguing with my ex to be. Yeah. <laughs> in hindsight, in yeah. hindsight, I probably, exactly. I probably didn't catch you at the best moment, yeah, yeah. but I took it as, well, I don't have time for you. I'm not going to talk to you. And then, uh, yeah, you had, you had a good contest yeah, with that, that, with that, that one. And that then, was a good contest. Yeah. I used to really like my vegan son. So. Yeah. One of the better ones, that's for sure. Yeah, and then after that, we—I don't know how. 
I don't know, maybe you talked to me after the contest when I did better or something. Yeah, pro- probably. And then then it was like, all right, we'll talk a little bit more now. Yeah. I had to, I maybe had to prove myself. No, I think, I mean, yeah, a, a lot of people sort of mistake this with me. They think I'm like this really miserable, grumpy guy that just doesn't talk to anyone. You, just, you I'm, were, a little, I'm a little bit, a bit like that at first, but once you get to know me, I'm yeah, a bit but more you were, relaxed. you were back then, I think, and, and for a long time, you were a little bit more miserable. Yeah, probably. And now you're much happier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it, I just caught you at a bad moment, but yeah. that was my first memory. Yeah. So I had to share it. I, I don't even remember it. Yeah, of course, because <laughs> it wasn't important. It wasn't important to you, like. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't anybody, yeah. so, but, yeah, it's, it was, that was fun. No, but we've had some good times, South Africa, that, that was always a good memory, like, with, um, when 2010. We, yeah, when we did the RAND show one. Yeah. Yeah, after, after World, um, uh, before World, sorry, we did the qualifier there, that was good. Yeah. Uh, two days in the sunshine. Yeah. And then, in, we were on this resort all together, like, this, where, where it was only open for us, basically. And, you know, we all sat around after the competition, had a few drinks together. It was good times. Yeah, that was, that was really fun. Man. Yeah. There, there's a few of those, of course. I, I just remember how drunk Colin was. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Some, a few guys. Yeah. There was, we, had some, we had some good times in Iceland, too. Yeah. At that contest. Yeah, that, was that was a good. fun one, right? Uh, yeah, Skog doing his commando rolls over the... In the in the yeah in the in the reception of the hotel, <laughs> diving over sofas and stuff. Yeah, this, this gigantic like nearly four hundred pound man jumping over sofas and didn't, pretending to uh, shoot things. Didn't the uh, front desk people call the cops yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah good that was, times. That was fun. Well, I think I mean, is there there? Um, I think the last one, that, like somebody was asking, kind of, uh, um, you know, I think it's fairly clear, but future goals. Like now that you've kind of gone through everything, like where do you, where do you kind of see yourself in the next couple of years? What are, what are you trying to achieve? I mean, for me, it's um, I still want to compete. You know, yeah, that, that's the that's the big one. But at the moment, now it's sort of I I, I sort of went through a patch where I, I didn't enjoy strongman. It was just it was such a focus and such a goal. I wasn't taking any enjoyment from it. Yeah, although although sort of. You know, I was totally committed and everything else. It's, it wasn't fun. And now it's sort of, I'm in a position where there's no pressure on me. There's no anything. I'm a lot healthier than I used to be. So I could just go back to enjoying it, which was, which was why I started doing it in the first place. It was fun. Absolutely. And, and then I, I sort of lost, lost my way a little bit and lost track of that at some point. So for me, the next two years is that. And then obviously setting the wheels in motion for the, the get out plan when ready for when I do retire. And it's... Um, trying to get things in place, which, you know, we're always trying to do for after Strongman. Sure. But I'd certainly love to stay involved in the sport for as long as I possibly can, even if it's not in a competition environment, if it's, you know, promoting or yeah. refereeing or whatever, you know, I, I like to stay involved in the sport because, you know, I love Strongman and it's yeah. been such a, a massive, positive thing in my life. It's changed me as a person and I've got to see the world and, met some great people and it's you know it's been such a hell of a ride and you yeah. know if I can stay involved and give something back to the sport then that's great yeah I think I mean so so I mean those are the those are the goals like from a from a contest finish anything any I mean is there yeah. something that's specific that you're yeah and I, I want to get back to the final next year at World Strongest Man yeah um, that's that's number one goal after after I've got Dubai out of the way. Number, yeah. number one goal is make make the final world strongest man next year, and then hopefully the year after I could push on from there and be finishing sort of looking at top five, top three even. Yeah, and, and that's 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 where I want to be. That'd be great, man. Yeah, I think um, I think that'd be awesome. I mean, yeah. I, I you know I think I've I mean for both of us it's 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 I think we. You know, I, I kind of went through that period too, where um, you know I kind of had to take a step back and say, like, hey, I really need to enjoy this and kind of mm-hmm. think, you know, soak it in. I just I need to take it all in because it goes by so quick. Yeah. You know, it's it's like we're talking about you know us starting all those years ago, and it seems like it's in a lot of ways it's just gone by. Yeah. In the blink of an eye, and it's like, wow, we were the young guys. Yeah coming in and there were the older guys and now all of a sudden it's like wait a minute i mean i think one or two years ago i i was uh um i was the oldest one in the final by a couple months 
Yeah. And it was like, wow, that's pretty ridiculous. Cause you yeah. know, at the beginning it was like, I'm the younger guy making the finals. And now, yeah. you know, there's, um, I'm always happy when there's somebody older than me that makes the finals, but you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, it, it's, it's kind of eye opening in a way because, uh, it's, it's gone by quick and it's yeah. taken it all in. But, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, you still, um, from an enjoyment perspective, still need to, to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And I, I tell people all the time, you know, like with me, it's, it's something where I started a hundred percent for fun. Yeah. Uh, it was all it was. Yeah, it was exactly like, I needed, I needed a competitive outlet. I love lifting heavy weights and I wanted to compete because I'm competitive. Yeah. And this was a perfect thing for me to get into because it was that outlet yeah. that I needed. And I think that, you know, when you go back to the roots, if you, if you get into the sport and there are guys that get into the sport, you know, for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And they're going into it saying, Hey, I want, I want it to make me famous or I want, you know, the notoriety or I want the attention and they're out of the sport pretty quick. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, mean, I think that's always the, the, the telltale sign you can see, Yeah, you know, like, you know, we've been through the ups and downs and ridden with it and carried yeah. on and fought through all the rough times and. You know, you can see the guys that are in it for, for different reasons because the minute things start to get tough or things are not quite going how they want them to, they, they run them on. Hang it up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's, and that's I think, you know, for both of us, and, and I would say, you know, kind of to anybody out there, you know, if you're, if you're looking to get into strongman, it's, um, you know, do it, do it first and foremost for fun. You well, know, I think like if it's it, not out fun, of enjoyment, yeah, because yeah. because you're going to spend if you're starting strongman or you know you're moving through the ranks and whatever, you're going to be in pain a lot of the time, and there's oh, going to yeah. be dark yeah. times and it's going to be miserable at times. Yeah. If you can't take some enjoyment from it in in every other way, then yeah, it's really not the sport for you. Yeah, because there will be some times when it gets really quite mentally and physically tough. Absolutely. So if you yeah. can't take the enjoyment from it, you know what's left. Yeah. Well, you get through that and. It's, it's such a, um, and I think for both of us, you know, it's something where you, you lift a weight or you do an event or something you haven't been able to do and you've been working so hard for it. Mm -hmm. That's such an awesome thing. And then, yeah. you know, especially um, once you get to um, into competing and that type of thing, putting in all of that hard work, that body of work, and then going to a contest and having it translate to an awesome performance. Yeah. That is what I, I really love. But I love all the hard work that it takes to get there. I agree. You know, I mean, yeah. that's, it makes it so fun. Yeah. You know, well, cause I mean, I think, you, you know, you, the, the, the contest is just the, the final little bit of it. That's, yep. you know, everything else that goes into it, you have to enjoy the process. Yeah. I mean, me, me and Kate, like my partner talk about it a lot. We, you know, she does bodybuilding and she's like, the diet's really hard. And she's like, I still enjoy this as hard as it is. I have yep. to enjoy the process because it's the end result and all this is just work to get to that point. Yeah. You know, and I, I had a moment at the Britons this year where, you know, I actually went okay and I come third and, you know, it's not where I'd like to be, but for where yeah. I'm at, that was, that was good. And I, I was just sort of stood there. I was like, you know, this, this is what I love. This is, this is what I'm, you know, I've worked hard for this, for yeah. this moment where I'm standing there and I've loaded the last stone and then found out I've come third and, Whereas I wasn't sure I had, and it's like it's moments like that that make all of that hard work worth it. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know I think you have to always sort of keep your mind on, you know, there's always a positive at the end. Yeah, just yeah. you know, even when it gets tough. Yeah, but you know all the all the the, the hardness of the the training and the hard work and everything else, it's it's all worth it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I think it's you know just kind of to wrap wrap this all up I mean I think it's uh, um, you know it's pretty awesome to see you know your mindset through all this and, and um, you know perspective you know on how things have changed the sport you know and, and ups and downs and staying positive with it and, and um, you know through your personal life ups and downs and everything it's it's neat to see you come out of all of that and um, you know I hope that people listening to this can you know take some inspiration from mm. even a, even a little part of that you know, and say like, hey, you know, I could go through something tough and come out of it better and, and um, you know, stay positive. And, you know, I think that that um, outlook is huge. You yeah, know, I, I think mean, it's I think it's a very important part well, I think, of I mean, life. Sorry, just 
I think like, like when you had your bicep tear, I was exactly the same. It's it, the measure of you and everything else is is how you come back from that. And, yeah. and you know, you will go through dark times, but you just got to try and stay as positive as you can and, yeah. and know that it's always going to get better. Absolutely. I, li- I like that. It's yeah. always going to get better. So if people want to find you, support you, follow you, where, where would they go? Mainly Instagram is Terry Holland's WSM. Terry Holland's WSM. I don't really use Facebook or... Twitter or anything much anymore. Just, okay, you know, I'm turning into a proper old person. How about how about website or? Um, so no, I mean I've I've got a website that with my partner, which is terryandkate.com, um, okay. where we're both sort of keeping up to date with where, where we are and what we're doing and everything else. And um, you know, we are starting to put build some YouTube stuff together. But and what, what's the YouTube channel? Um, I can't even remember what it's called uh, <laughs> because it's it's still at the early stages. But eventually, we will we will have it up and but running. But if, if they search like Terry Hollins and yeah, um, you'll find some old videos of me doing silly stuff that I okay. shouldn't really be doing. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure if they search, they can find it yeah. on there. So, well, that's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate the time and, well, and very uh, much. perspective. And um, I think we will wrap it up there. So thank you guys for tuning in and we will catch you the next time.